Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozord and in this video I want to talk about buckling analysis in Abacus part 2 comparison of analytical and numerical results using solid elements. How to ask your video related questions? Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content of this tutorial. In the first part of this tutorial, a 3D slender beam with pinned boundary conditions at both ends was modeled using beam elements. This is the link of first part of this tutorial. The critical buckling load was calculated using abacus and compared with a numerical solution. There was a good agreement between the analytical and numerical results. In the second part of this tutorial, the slender beam will be modeled as a solid and meshed using solid elements. Finally, a mesh sensitivity analysis will be conducted to investigate the effect of the mesh size on the accuracy of calculating critical buckling force when using solid elements. Now I want to talk about defining the solid slender beam. Here we have the sketch of its section, the radius is 0.02 meter and the depth is 1 meter because the length of the beam is 1 meter and this is the final shape now I go to Abacus to show you the solid slender beam in the previous tutorial I focused on model 1 and in this tutorial I will focus on model 3, model 4 and model 5 here you can see the solid beam This is the sketch of its cross section. It is a circle with radius of 0.02 meter. Its length is 1 meter. Now I want to talk about defining reference points. A reference point is defined at the center of each end of the beam to apply pinned boundary conditions. Each end of the beam will be coupled to its reference point. And here, as you can see, I have defined a coupling constraint between the reference point and this face. Also, I will define another coupling constraint between the RP2 and its relevant face. Now I go to Abacus to show you these settings. I go to the property module. Also in this model, I have used the same material and I have defined a solid section and I have assigned it to the geometry and in the assembly module I define two reference points um, they are here and also I have used the same settings for the step module I have defined a buckling step and uh, I have set it to Langso solver and I have set the number of eigenvalues requested to 20. And in the interaction module, I have defined two coupling constraints. This is the first one and this is the second one. Now I want to talk about load and boundary conditions. 
Compressive load with magnitude of 1 newton and pin boundary conditions will be defined like the previous tutorial and applied to the relevant reference points. Now I go to Abacus to show you these settings. Here um, I have defined two boundary conditions about the down As you can see, uh, this is a pinned boundary condition because the UR1 is not restricted. Okay, we can have rotation around the x-axis. And about up, also here UR1 is not restricted. And as we want to apply force along the z-axis, also U3 is not restricted. And I have defined the concentrated force and applied it to RP1 with this magnitude. And as you can see, it is compressive. Now I want to talk about meshing. The simulation will be conducted with three different element sizes to investigate the effect of the element size on the accuracy of calculating the critical buckling force. For the coarse mesh, the element size is equal to 0.01. For the fine mesh, the element size is equal to 0.005. And for the extra fine mesh, the element size is equal to 0.0025. Here we have the coarse mesh and the global element size is set to 0.01. And here we have the number of nodes and the total number of elements. And here we have the fine mesh and the global element size is 0.005 and this is the total number of nodes and this is the total number of elements. And here we have the extra fine mesh and as you can see the global element size is set to 0.0025 and this is the total number of nodes and this is the total number of elements. Now I go to Abacus to show you these settings. I go to the mesh module. Here you can see the coarse mesh. And this is the fine mesh. And this is the extra fine mesh. Now I want to talk about uh, simulation results. And here we have the simulation result obtained via coarse mesh. And as you can see, the eigenvalue is equal to this value. Actually, this is the critical buckling load for obtaining the first buckling mode and this is the first buckling mode of the structure and here we have the result obtained via fine mesh and as you can see the value of the first eigenvalue is changed but um, there is no important change in the mode shape and here we have the result obtained via extra fine mesh and as you can see the eigenvalue is changed again but the mode shape is not changed. First mode shapes of three simulations are like each other. The difference is in the eigenvalues which are the critical buckling load of each mode. Now I want to compare the numerical and analytical results. Here we have the analytical buckling force and here we have the numerical buckling force obtained via coarse mesh and here we have the numerical buckling force obtained via fine mesh and here we have the numerical buckling force obtained via extra fine mesh. 
there is a good agreement between the analytical result and the extra fine mesh numerical result. But to decrease the postbuckling simulation times of the following tutorials, the fine mesh will be used instead, so the simulations will be efficient and accurate. In the following tutorial, post-buckling analysis of the beam will be conducted using the dynamic explicit step. The beam will be modeled as a solid and meshed using an element size equal to 0.005 which belongs to the fine mesh. To investigate the buckling behavior, buckling modes will be used to define geometrical imperfection. You can contact me via Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp and we can make a special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high quality simulations for your thesis, exercises and industrial projects. And we offer support in writing the modeling and result discussion part of your thesis. Also, we have consulting services for MSc PhD positions or job interviews. And we can prepare the presentation of your simulation works for you. Now, I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.